So getting down to Moab for Easter Jeep Safari is a 20 hour, 2000 ish kilometer drive. This is an absolutely scenic, beautiful route uh, over to Vancouver. And then we're gonna be heading down through Washington state, cutting over a high elevation snow Snoqualmie Pass. And then we're gonna cut through the Eastern side of Oregon, clip a little bit of Idaho. We're gonna meet up with a special guest along the way. And then we're gonna head down from Idaho drop in through Salt Lake City, Utah, and then cut over to Moab. I'm sure there'll be lots of fun along the way. I'll tell you about how the Demonator's doing on the highway, just how much fuel I'm having to use. But it'd be fun to vlog my way down to Moab with you guys and kicking off this awesome 2023 Easter Jeep Safari Adventure Series. All right, first fuel stop of the day. We made it just past Bellevue. We're heading up into heading up into Snoqualmie Pass. Usually we can get to the top of Snoqualmie Pass without having to get fuel, but this is Valvoline instant oil change where you don't need an appointment to change your oil. Really? Okay, well that was annoying. I was gonna uh, tell you guys a story about crossing the border, but there's advertisements the entire time filling up. So first fill up, 99 bucks US. What was that? Uh, 18 gallons to get from my house to where I am here. Just about to go up the belt, uh, Snoqualmie Pass. Now, usually we can get to the top of the Snoqualmie Pass before we need to fill up, but uh, I filled up at my house, so I drove all the way to the ferry. So we're not that much different, but I'm probably getting 350 to 400 kilometers of range, which I don't know what is that, 250 miles maybe? Um, but anyways, funny story at the border. Border guard says, uh, where are you headed? I say, Moab. And uh, he says, don't abuse this thing like that guy with the G-Wagon on YouTube. Yeah, so anyways, if you haven't seen that video, go find it. If you have, you know what I'm talking about. But we're gonna make our way up the pass. It looks like it's starting to snow here at the gas station at the bottom, so. See if there's any snow as we go across Snoqualmie Pass here in a few minutes. Continue on I-90 East for 96 miles. Just making our way up the pass. Still above some freezing temperatures, so you guys can actually hear me driving because the uh, supercharger and the V8 is really going uh, as we climb up this pass non-stop. But I'm glad I fueled up at the bottom because. Yeah, I would have burned through that last half of an eighth, a sixteenth of a tank pretty quick with this long, long stretch. Uh, but we'll see, we gotta get to the top first. Maybe it'll be snowing up there. We are uh, just, just below the snow line, like really just below the snow line. <laughs> Coming across the summit of Snoqualmie Pass here. We are right at the snow line now, right at the summit. <laughs> These trees are uh, covered in snow, maybe 10 or 20 feet above the road. That's that's how close to the snow line we are. Last year we came through here, this was snowing and uh, one of the lanes was covered in snow completely. So this time of year can be a little bit unpredictable coming through the pass, but it's like we're gonna sneak through and just, just dodge the snow. I think I spoke a little too soon. There is tons of snow at the top of the pass here. <laughs> wow, look at this. the southeast corner of Washington State as we head towards Oregon and I was just noticing how smooth and straight the Demonator rides on some of these sections of the highway where the road is smooth and straight like I haven't driven a Jeep that 
is this little like a Jeep to drive. It's, uh, there's not a lot of play in the steering wheel. It doesn't wander all over the place. It just kind of cruises. Like, other than the wide axles and fat tires kind of pulling us in the lines, I mean, we are cruising along here at, uh, you know, 70, 80 miles an hour. And it is, it's like driving a regular truck or something like that. It's, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it doesn't, it doesn't drive like the JL. It drives a lot nicer than the JL. Certainly way better than the JK. I think a lot of people are wondering, you know, like put 40s on, big axles, all the suspension stuff. It drives, I mean, it drives way, it drives better than stock, undeniably. And for just all the stuff that's on here, it's super smooth. And we're coming through another pass here as we uh, get close to entering Oregon and head down towards Pendleton. And uh, just a really cool shot of, you know, looking out the window, I see these snow covered hills and fields off in the distance and then a few minutes later we're uh driving right through them it's kind of neat it's uh only three degrees celsius so it's still cool but i guess we uh picked up enough elevation that the snow hasn't melted here yet just an absolutely beautiful day for a drive Just like that, we cross what I believe is the Columbia River, and uh, that puts us into the beautiful state of Oregon, which we're gonna clip across the top right corner to and dip into Idaho, and uh, that's where we'll spend tonight in Boise, and then uh, finish our drive tomorrow down into Utah. Just passing through Pendleton, stopped to fuel up because we're about to head to another pass and I wanted to make sure I had lots of fuel to get through to the other side. I was down to about a third of a tank, but uh, we've always got the spare jerry can in the back. So far, to get from Victoria to Pendleton, we've used about 43 gallons of gas, which uh, I think converts to about 200 and something liters of fuel. And uh, we've still got another 226 miles to go. Yes, I know we're talking in miles because Google Maps has uh, decided to show the distance in miles. So I don't know if I can quite get there on this tank that I have right now. Uh, I guess it depends on uh, how well we do through the mountains. I got about 310 kilometers of range. I've been getting about 350 to 375 on a tank, but these mountain passes and uh, trying to keep a pretty good pace. Uh, it really eats the fuel quickly, but this is absolutely beautiful going through uh, this here, coming up to this uh, pass. It's, it's a big steep, uh, a big steep incline coming out of Pendleton into the mountains. And uh, there's some, some snow uh, that we're gonna be, uh, I don't think there'll be any high on the highway, but I, the, the mountains are, covered up here so the steep grade coming out of Pendleton and into the pass you know, going the other way they have a bunch of runoff for trucks uh, in case they lose their brakes the road is like steaming coming up here must have been really warm in the afternoon get some Sun and now it's uh, one degree below zero Celsius so just below freezing and it's like just steam everywhere on the road. Finally coming out of the mountain passes and we're just coming into Boise, Idaho. We're about 70 miles away, so an hour at the speed limit. <laughs> uh, probably less than an hour, um, but uh, I've just a quick gas check. Used about uh, 57 gallons so far and uh, that's gonna get me probably pretty close. So probably 60, 65 gallons to get all the way to Boise from uh, Victoria. <laughs> but uh, looks like there's a huge storm brewing over on the horizon. We'll see what the, what the storm is like when we get there. And uh, I'll show you who we're gonna meet up with uh, and I'm gonna be staying with tonight. So hang tight. I don't know if this is a rainstorm or a dust storm that's uh, coming over the city here, but it looks like we're gonna pass right by it. I don't know if we'll duck back into it as we get uh, close into Boise, but it almost seems like it might be a dust storm. Really weird. But it's really dark clouds over to my left and really blue over to my right. It 
Weird weather here. <laughs> All right, guys, it's the next morning. I uh, got in a little bit late last night, but uh, look at this. We've got uh, Will from Venture Rooms, JK behind me. Come say hi, Will. Hey, <laughs> so here's the problem. I thought I had a really cool Jeep until I parked next to this thing. <laughs> and now I have to deal with the fact that Casey's Demonator is just bigger and badder than my Jeep, so. So <laughs> you win, man. Well, you know, for the moment, but uh, thank you very much for letting me stay at your house last night. I appreciate it a ton. I got to head out and uh, go meet up with Sean from the story till now down in, uh, where are we going? Moab? Oh, yeah, <laughs> down at Easter Jeep Safari. Sean's already down there, but Will is looking for a new rig and he hasn't decided yet. Nope. And I there thought I would corrupt him a little bit by taking him out in the Demonator this morning before I head out. So you want to, we'll hop in, we'll, we'll go take it for a rip. Uh, and yes, absolutely. You guys can see what uh, Will thinks of the Demonator. And if you haven't checked out Will's channel, Go check it out, it's Venture to Rome. I'll put a link down in the description somewhere. If you wanna find out what Will actually ends up buying. Yeah, go, go check out my channel. I'm, it's gonna be posted next week. And I'm looking at five or six different rigs uh, and the jury is out. I'm gonna decide like in the next few days. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. Yeah. So Venture to Rome and uh, maybe we'll see you up at Epic getting us swapped. All right, well, let's take this out for a rip and uh, see what you think. Do it. <laughs> that's, so, that's like so absurd. It's completely that, absurd. That wasn't even full throttle. Yeah, I was uh, I was exhilarated and scared a little bit. I may have peed a little bit in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess up my new seats. <laughs> There's no, there's no reason for this, and yet it's like At the all. coolest thing. You have to get used to that, because when it's full throttle like that, it sounds like something is wrong almost, like something like you're at the front of a rocket or something and there's an explosion happening behind. I have this whole rating system for the cars that I'm looking at for, yeah. the, for the rigs and uh, there's no there's no rating for this. This is like in a class by it. It's like, is it comfortable? I mean, who cares? Well, I noticed fuel economy wasn't on your list. <laughs> fuel economy's not on their zone. So, so this know. one's, yeah. You got some first impressions while we're driving. Yeah. You want to take it for a spin? Yes, very, very much. I want to drive this thing. Oh. Oh my god. I don't know. I didn't really I didn't really lay it down. No, that's that was that's, a tentative. That was like an overlander. The starter uh, The it. starter yeah. launch, yeah. Ooh. Yes! Nothing. Man oh man, I don't like nothing else matters. Yeah. This thing. And I gotta be honest with you, it actually rides really well. It does, it's smooth eh? and you know, it's fine in the corners. It's, you need to be used to how it breaks and how it goes around a corner because yeah. it's not like a normal Jeep. But the uh, Alka shocks make a huge difference. I mean, uh, as yeah. far as on-road performance so far, I'm blown away. I thought it would be really uh, stiff and a lot of body roll. And granted, you probably shouldn't take that corner in any car at 80 miles an hour. Uh, not that we were going. Not we were not we going. Were not, but no, like, just not. in general, you shouldn't do that. But it, so I felt it a little bit of body roll, you know, pulling a little bit of G's around that corner. But that yeah. was, that was, I will never go that fast overlanding or rock, or rock crawl. Yet. I mean, it's, you know, the problem is, is that at least for me at the moment, the only thing I want to do is gun it all the time. So I think I would just be mowing through the gas in this thing. It, it will, it will drink the fuel. It is a, a thirsty animal for sure. Okay, here's the other thing. It, it's got that super deep, throaty, uh, massive V8 in it, but it also has, it's like supercharger turbo. Supercharger. Supercharger That's in it. That's the line you hear. And so like, Give it a it's, little. it's almost like, it sounds like, almost sounds like a, you got a coyote under the hood. It's just like howling every time you hit it. It wants to, it wants to. It wants to fight you, is how I describe it. It's like, it's yeah. like singing a little song. Yeah, give it, give it a good punch and then... Ooh! Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I don't... Oh, so good. 
<laughs> a lot of you guys ask, well, why did we build such a ridiculous vehicle? To have fun, to show you guys, to have others experience. I give as many people test drives. I mean, I can't let everybody drive it, but you know, I try to get everybody out for a ride in it as much as possible and then let you guys just see us experience something so ridiculous uh, through YouTube, which is such a, a great, great ability to be able to have. So. Thank you, YouTube. Thank, Thank you. you YouTube. Thank you for being here so I can do this. <laughs> uh, eight hours, so I better get rolling. Uh, go check out Will's channel, Venture to Rome, and uh, see what's coming up next for, I was going to say Jeeps, but you're looking at more than just Jeeps. I'm looking so. at lots of different stuff, yep. but it's like, like, I think actually, I don't know when this video is going to air, but today is the day I'm going to make the decision. Oh boy. So, yeah. So go check out Venture to Rome. I'm going to hit the road and uh, let's get on with the rest of this road trip. I'll show you some of the awesome views and scenic drive along the way down to Moab, Utah, and uh, as we roll into town later today. All right, we're rolling out of Boise. Really appreciate Will uh, letting me stay at his place last night, and uh, it was awesome to see his reaction to the Demonator this morning, taking it out for a test drive. I can't wait to see what he ends up with on his channel, but I gotta make some good time. I just got a text message from uh, Justin B. McBride, who lives in Salt Lake City, and he says there is a brutal snowstorm coming through the city, and I've gotta pass through Salt Lake City to get to Moab here in about, uh, probably about four hours I'll pass through there. So, fingers crossed. Uh, but Justin posted a picture of his uh, Jeep just covered in ice everywhere. It was like an ice storm he drove through. He says it was one of the worst storms. So, great. We got that to look forward to on our way down to Moab. That should be fun. Always, always an adventure on the road trips. All right, I'm living the uh, not so healthy life. Another fuel stop. We just finished coming through the pass that dropped us down and we're now in Utah. I can't remember the name of the pass, but we're in a little place called Snowville. I think that's how it's pronounced. That's how it's spelled. It had me a little worried as I was coming through. There was a lot of snow coming through the pass and it wasn't collecting on the highway, thankfully, but it was definitely reducing visibility and uh, made for an interesting drive. So interested to see what's ahead. Uh, we're about to come into Salt Lake City. I think we're 40 or 50 miles out. We'll blast through and then up the other side and out Salt Lake City towards Moab. Now, uh, Justin was saying that it was a Soldier's Pass, I think it is. It's supposed to be pretty snowy. So I think when I get to Salt Lake City, before we head into the hills, we'll get fuel again and see what the weather's like. I think there's two routes that we can take to Moab. I'll have to check the map and see. Uh, last thing I wanna do is get stuck on the highway uh, because of some vehicles that have slid off the road or something. Fuel check, we just put another 17 gallons in. That puts us at about 90 gallons so far. All right, I'm gonna eat this piece of pizza from Flying J. Hopefully not have indigestion. And uh, let's get through Salt Lake City and see what it looks like on the other side. All right, guys, last fuel stop. We made it to Salt Lake City. I'm just on the southern end and we're about to head up into the pass that's gonna take us in towards Moab. What a drive through Salt Lake City. Coming into here, it was snowing like crazy. Uh, conditions were really hard to see and uh, it was just generally miserable. And we got frozen ice all over the front of the Jeep, uh, which I just chiseled off here at the gas station. Uh, we just threw in another 14 gallons, so I think that brings us up to 104 gallons. So whatever we use in the full tank to get us into Moab, I'm going to guess about half a tank, so maybe another 7 or 8 gallons. We're probably 110 gallons to complete this trip. So it was. let's get going and see what's in store for us because uh, I'm a little bit worried about the snow as we get back up into the elevation and uh, Justin uh, B. McBride was saying that there might be some snow coming through this pass. So. Stay tuned. See all the trucks up there lined up coming across the summit. <laughs> this is what Justin was telling me to uh, watch out for and whether or not there'd be a lot of snow. It looks like there has been several recent snowstorms across here, fairly freshly plowed along the edges. And uh, it is snowy everywhere, but doesn't look like it's coming down now. It's, the road's fairly plowed, fairly cleared, but we are crawling behind this truck traffic in front of me. We're just crawling along here. 
And I think, oh, okay, I see, look at this. But the drift's coming right over the road. Guess they haven't uh, completely plowed. I guess you can't even plow. Look at this. You can't plow. You have to uh, get one of these things to chisel it down. Snow shredder. So it looks like it's chopping away at the drifts on the sides. Ooh, that's cool. That's five degrees below zero, five degrees below freezing Celsius. Uh, in it. <laughs> There's chop in the sides. Must have had a recent snowstorm. That looks uh, fairly recent, uh, fairly fresh. Those drifts coming over the edge, all this, all this uh, powder on the side has been stacked and pushed not too long ago. It is a uh, snow field up here for sure. made it to Moab finally. What a long trip. It was over 2,000 kilometers. Uh, we used about 105 gallons of gas. That was the final number uh, over about 20 hours almost of driving. So that was pretty crazy. Our final fuel economy number, 18.9 liters per 100 kilometers, which is actually quite impressive. 105 gallons, just over 2,000 kilometers, 18.9 liters. I got everybody covered, right? Somebody will figure out down in the comments. I'm gonna go try and find Sean. He's floating around here somewhere, but uh, first I'm gonna have an awesome bacon cheeseburger and chocolate shake, because I am starving. And uh, well, stay tuned for awesome Easter Jeep Safari Moab fun. I'm gonna go catch up with Metal Cloak in the CTI trailer. I'm gonna show you guys around downtown Moab, what's going on at Easter Jeep Safari. And then of course, we're gonna run some awesome trails in the Demonator, and then do a little camping and overlanding after the event is over. So stay tuned for that. Hit subscribe, leave a like, and leave any questions down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.